Hey everybody, Hoosier Jedi here with another review for you. This time talking episode 11 of season 2 of Supergirl, The Martian Chronicles. And this is a really nice episode focused on McGann and John. Um, although most of the other characters kind of got their, their little moments here. So uh, that's where I'd like to start. Um, <clears throat> the bit with uh, between Alex and... Um, Maggie, that was uh, that was some good stuff. Um, just really amused that of all things, they were really pumped about going to a bare naked ladies concert. Um, and that's not against uh, any sort of a knock against their band. The band I used to have one of their CDs, or I got it for Christmas one year, and my aunt was all like freaked out by the name of the band. It was kind of going on like, I can't believe they call themselves that. I'm like, it's just the name of a band. Let's see. Um, now it is a little surprising that Alex really could not tell that Kara was not happy about this whole you're going to go be doing, doing this thing on what's basically my birthday sort of thing and um, doing a very poor job of oh no 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 it's fine go ahead you know you can sort of chalk that up to obviously Alex being a little willfully blind about wanting to have, you know, this sort of special day with her girlfriend and, you know, being able to get backstage passes to see a band that she really like. I mean, dang, that, that's pretty, pretty hard to pass up. <clears throat> but, uh, you know, Kara uh, ultimately being like, yeah, you know, this, this hurts. I mean, that was, that was nicely done. And I like how they kind of played around with the whole mental link that Alex had with the Martian that took her place uh, to um, ultimately have that cute scene with the cupcake there at the end, but saying, like, yeah, you know, sometimes these two are going to be a little insensitive to each other the way family sometimes is. You know, it's sort of like, well, yeah, well, we could have your birthday together, but we've had birthdays together plenty of times. You know, this... This once, I want to do something else. Is it really that big of a deal? So, yeah, nicely done stuff there. Um, stuff with Monel and how he is um, really actually taking being rejected by Kara rather poorly. You know, he's he's putting on the making a show, trying to move on, um, especially with Eve there. And I like how that was handled, where you can kind of see like it's really kind of dawning on Kara that. I'm actually sort of jealous here. I'm kind of regretting this choice that I've made. What was really telling, though, was that bit with uh, the club soda that Onel was genuinely trying to make a change in his life to be a better person, you know, to stay away from alcohol, which, you know, generally does not help bring out the positive qualities in guys like him. Uh, so I like that. That was nice. And that was that was a subtle thing. It was a nice way of calling attention to that. Um, the whole situation with uh, them being locked in the DEO. Well, I mean, if you've seen John Carpenter's The Thing, this is very, very clearly uh, borrowing from that in spirit. Um, <laughs> I mean, uh, the name of this episode is The Martian Chronicles. Uh, again, rest referencing classic science fiction. Uh, Ray Bradbury, if I remember uh, correctly. Um, and I did like the way they handled that whole thing. I mean, it was very it was atmospheric in that bit where uh, the White Martian is revealed to be Win. I mean, they did handle that really well. It, like, it really was creepy to see him grin like that and transform his arm and just go to town. I mean, that, that was good stuff. And began um, filling out the backstory about, you know, um, Armek, I believe this is his name, uh, and you know, what might, a little bit more about like what might white Martian culture was like, and you know how she does not care for this guy at all, um, and just sort of the, the fanaticism with which uh, he's. Uh, Armek has devoted himself to, like, yeah, you know, like, Mars is a paradise now that we've wiped out the Greens. Well, you know, I don't know what side of Mars you're living on, man, but uh, I guess Martians are sort of used to deserts, so I guess um, 
paradise is in the eye of the beholder, but there were nice, you know, nice lush valleys or something on there or whatever. Uh, humans would have, do, we do have the technology that we would have noticed that. So, um, I guess it's a matter of perspective there. And just him saying, like, yeah, you know, uh, when, uh, when we feel like it, we would probably come over here and just feel like, you know, hey, baby, kill us. We want to kill all the humans? Which, you know, just again shows that uh, the White Martians uh, are a threat to be taken seriously. If it's just sort of decides, like, they decide, eh, we don't like those guys, we're going to wipe them out anyway. Not for any really particular reason, just because. Just because they don't like the idea of having to share the universe with us. And, um... I'm not trying to say that that's an unrealistic motivation. Just look around the state of the world today. People are just upset at the idea of people who are different than so much as existing. Just having to share a majority of a continent with somebody who is in some way different than they are. And it's true on every continent. Not just the one I have. <clears throat> uh, now, the whole thing with uh, Miss Martian and Martian Manager's relationship going in kind of a romantic direction, well, I kind of sense that this is where it was going to go. And previously, it was sort of like he, he, he was kind of like an uncle to her. Here, their ages, I mean, Miss Martian's been aged up. The idea of these two people pursuing, uh, you know, a relationship like on that front. I mean, you could kind of tell that's where I was going to go. And I thought it was reasonably well handled. It was very heartfelt when John had to admit to McGann and, in a way, even to himself, that he had developed real feelings for her. That he would allow himself to have these feelings again after the death of his wife, which you know, is understandably not an easy thing to do. And to have those feelings for a member of the race that helped murder his wife and his daughters. But again, it's about seeing the person for who they are, not what they are. Uh, now, McGann going off to Mars to sort of look for other white Martians who feel the same as her. Well, this is a classic, okay, we're in a situation where, at this point, there's no logical reason these characters shouldn't be together, but, you know, happiness is boring. So, yeah, we have to find a, a way to get her out of it, get one of the characters out of there. Now, here in all fairness, it's better handled. It does make sense that McGann could not be the only white Martian who's not happy about the situation. It has some genuine good in it. And the idea that she could go in there and, um, you know, maybe start trying to redeem the white Martian race a little bit. And that does open up some very interesting future possibilities. But, uh, still, it kind of... It's uh, landed on a little thick that they won't even allow the two of them, even the most brief uh, amount of time, to really enjoy this deep-down place with their relationship. But it does get you right here, and that's 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 how you do it good TV. Um, let's see what else. Hmm. Uh, nothing too really uh, else. Nothing really else to really add about this episode. <sighs> oh, sorry, I was trying to fight down the yawn, but I just couldn't make it. <clears throat> so uh, I'm gonna call it here, everybody. Uh, thanks for watching. As always, please comment, rate, and subscribe. Uh, please join me on Tumblr at Jedi Reviewer, as well as Twitter at uh, Who's Your Jedi. It's a nice stuff.